Hello Hotties, today I'm bringing you a video live from the lab about how to integrate Home Assistant with Tuya devices. I hope you enjoy. If you have spent any time browsing AliExpress for cheap smart devices, you've probably come across these devices labeled Tuya. Um, but what is Tuya and how do you use them with Home Assistant in a private manner? So Tuya is basically a Chinese company that produces software and services for actual manufacturers. So they provide like an IoT platform that includes a mobile app and a cloud service and actual device firmware. And they don't actually manufacture devices, but rather they license their platform to companies. And this can range from nameless AliExpress products, as well as well-known brands, both inside and outside of China. So let's have a look about the different types of devices that are supported by Tuya and different ways to integrate them into Home Assistant. Um, I bought these two identical looking plugs from AliExpress, but one of them actually uses Wi-Fi to talk directly to the Tuya cloud, while the other one uses the Zigbee protocol, which lets them talk to some kind of hub. Normally that hub then talks to Tuya, but we can use Home Assistant as our own hub and avoid the cloud entirely. In this table, I've laid out all the different options for integrating Tuya with Home Assistant. And first of all, there are the Zigbee devices, which get a perfect score because they're very easy to set up using the official home uh, automation Zigbee integration. And next is the official Tuya integration, which is very easy to set up and well supported, but it operates using the Tuya cloud and we will not discuss it any further for that reason. Um, next up are two nearly identical extensions and they both need Tuya to pair the device with your account. But after that, they work completely locally. And this is an okay option if you are like, have a name brand device, it's rather expensive in that you would rather not risk damaging, but it's not ideal. And then we get to the Tuya Convert and Tuya Cloud Cutter. Uh, tools, which are methods to hack the over there update mechanism of Tuya firmware to load alternative firmware. And this is kind of tricky because it requires running all sorts of terminal commands and setting up your own firmware. Um, and But the main problem is that these exploits tend to get fixed and then they no longer work. So you have to get lucky and find some device with older firmware for this to work. But if you do, they could be kind of nice. And then finally, there is serial flashing, which is like super duper complicated and hard and tedious, but it always works. And you just need to take about take the device apart and solder wires to it and then flash it with a custom firmware. So let's start with Tuya Local because I have this infrared heater in my bathroom by a Dutch company called Euron that turns out to use Tuya behind the scenes. And I don't really want to risk breaking this device with custom firmware. So local Tuya seems the way to go. Um, I tried both local Tuya and Tuya local. And while local, tu <laughs> local Tuya has more GitHub stars, it seems like Tuya local has an easier installation procedure that doesn't require messing with the cloud console of Tuya. The first step is unfortunately to pair the device with the official Tuya app. And to do that, you install the Tuya smart app from the app store and then log in or create an account. And then you need to put the device in pairing mode and let the app discover and add it. Next, we need to install the Tuya local integration using Hex by pressing open Hex repository in the readme of Tuya local. Uh, subscribe if you, for when I get around to making a video about installing Hex itself. But once it opens in Hex, simply press download in the bottom right corner and then restart Home Assistant. Then you'll want to go to integrations and then press add integration and search for Tuya local. It will offer an advanced setup option where you can manually pilfer the keys out of your device. But here we'll pick the cloud assistant setup, which is much easier. In the next step, it will ask for a user code, which we need to obtain from the app by going to the me tab, then the hexagon nut for settings, and then account and security. And next go back to the Me tab and press the scan icon to scan the QR code. Then we'll actually need to configure the device itself, which should now have the device ID and local key pre-filled, 
but you'll need to obtain the IP address from the web interface of your router if the automatic discovery didn't work. And then finally, select a profile for your device and give it a name, and then the device should be added to Home Assistant. Now let's have a look at adding a Tuya Zigbee device to Home Assistant, which is really the same as adding any Zigbee device to Home Assistant, since Zigbee is an open standard. First of all, you need a Zigbee dongle, and in my setup, I use a Raspberry Pi 4 with a Sonoff Zigbee dongle, which works perfectly with the official Zigbee Home Automation integration. Then, it's as simple as adding or opening the Zigbee integration, selecting devices under your dongle, and then press Add Device. And now you need to put device in pairing mode, which is in this case done by long pressing the button. And then it will just be automatically discovered and added, and that's all. Next, let's look at those OTA methods. And these two projects work by packaging an alternative firmware as a software update and then tricking the device into installing it. And this is an endless kind of cat and mouse game between the hackers and Tuya, where every time a new exploit is discovered, Tuya releases a fix and then it no longer works. The first one is Tuya Convert, which targets expressive ESP chips and their exploits started getting patched somewhere in 2019 and many newer Tuya devices no longer use ESP chips at all. So this one is unlikely to work on newer devices. And the second one is Tuya Cloud Cutter, which targets a family of backend devices that are used in many newer Tuya devices. However, their exploits also started getting patched in 2022. So until new exploits are discovered, these two projects currently only work if you are very lucky to get a device with an outdated firmware and the only way to find out is to just give it a try. I will skip over some of the details of the installation but when I ran Tuya Convert on my Tuya smart socket it just told me that the device was not an ESP chip and that's all. Then I moved into CloudCutter uh, which has a wiki page of known patch firmware versions so I paired my socket with the official app and sure enough, my version matched one of the known patched ones. I had hoped it wouldn't come to this, but since none of the OTA methods worked, the only option that is left is to open the device and directly flash new firmware to it using a serial converter. This is in my opinion really not worth the hassle if you can instead just buy a device with an officially supported local API, but it's definitely possible if you have the tools and the skills. Um, but word of warning, never, never, never plug in a device to a mains power when its internals are all over your desk. The process itself was not that complicated in theory, but it's just very tedious and error prone. It took me almost a whole day and that is with an electrical engineering degree and some expensive tools, so be warned. Step one is to disassemble the device and take the PCB out. On the PCB you'll likely find a little data board with a microcontroller and a PCB antenna and that is the main chip of the device. So carefully note down the model number of this daughter board and the chip on it and then proceed. After many failed attempts, I just took out the whole air gun and completely removed the daughter board from the PCB. And this allowed me to easily solder wires to the pads and avoid the main board interfering with serial communication. Then you need to connect the board to your USB to serial adapter and this requires four wires. First you need to connect the ground to the ground and then VCC to 3.3 volts and then the serial pins. And this is counterintuitive but you need to connect the TX for transmit to the RX for receive on the board and the RX of the adapter to the TX of the board. And there's also a CEN pin or SEN or whatever which you'll need to tie to ground later for to reset the board. And then in theory you are ready for flashing. And after much experimentation and failure, I had the most success with the backend GUI flash tool. And once I set the right model and increased the UART timeout slightly, you just press do backup and flash new. And then it asks you to touch the CN pin to the ground and then it should start flashing, hopefully. The nice thing about this tool is that not only will it back up the old firmware and flash open backend, it will also extract the pinout from the backup and after it's done flashing, 
it will pop up this nice window with the description of all the pins and what they're connected to. Whether by OTA update or serial flashing, once you have uploaded custom firmware, it's now up to you to actually configure it correctly. And to do this, the first step is to connect to the access point that the device created. And there you can go to config and configure Wi-Fi. And then you enter your Wi-Fi credentials and hit submit to restart the device. After reconnecting to the device via your normal Wi-Fi network, you can do two things. Either you can launch open backend web app and paste the extract in JSON there to automatically configure your device, or you can use this OTA feature to install some other firmware. And open backend seems to work fine and can integrate with Home Assistant through an MQTT broker. But since I'm already running several ESP Home devices, I went with that. In your ESP Home dashboard, press New Device and then pick a name and select the correct module. Mine is a BK72 blah blah, and it's a CB2S module. And the first time you install ESP Home, you will have to select Manual Download. But once it runs ESP Home, you can update the firmware wirelessly. It'll take a while to compile, but once it's done, you want to select the backend OTA file format. However, if you just try to download that to the open backend interface, it'll tell you that it's invalid. So to fix this, you simply need to rename the file to include the name of your chip, and then you can proceed to upload the firmware. And last but not least, now you'll actually need to write the ESP home configuration for the chip. And this is a bit beyond the scope of the video, but here is what I have added to mine so far. But unfortunately, the power monitor does not work yet, but the relays and switches do. So that is it for this video. My takeaway from all is that Zigbee devices are amazing. To your local is like tolerable if you have to. And flashing custom firmware is a huge can of worms that I would avoid unless I were looking for a fun challenge rather than a working smart device. And if you have enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. And if you have any questions or ideas, let me know in the comments. Bye.